Steve Dace, Michigan Podcast, breaking down the Big Ten and college football with us. Uh, Steve, of course, the news came out just three days after the uh, appointment, the hiring of Shemi Schembechler to his position is in a recruiting capacity at the University of Michigan that he ha- had to step away. He apologized for some of the things that he, let's say, supported, liked, reposted, retweeted on social media that were termed to be racist, inappropriate, and such. I have not seen those posts in regards to what was what what he was responding to or supporting. So a, a little bit of background on this story for me, because I, I have not said a word about it publicly one time. Uh, and this'll this would be the first public comments I give on the story. And I'll I'll explain why. I I, I do a job full time that is heavily invested in unavoidably and sometimes needlessly divisive rhetoric and content. And, um, and, and, and my calling to that uh, mission is not nearly as long as my love and affection for Michigan in, in particular and college football in general. And I, I, you know, we all need escapes. We all need things that we retreat to from real life to get recharged and remind ourselves that we're not as uh, important as we think we are and things aren't always as serious as we make them out to be. And this is, this is one of them for me. And so you, you know, if you follow me on Michigan podcast, I don't make any references to what I do elsewhere. Uh, I just want to talk Michigan football. Um, I, I, I had at the dawn of the NIL era, I've never mentioned this publicly either at the dawn of the NIL era. I had, a, I had somebody interested in a collective come to me, about partnering with Michigan Podcasts for promotion uh, and involving maybe a, maybe finding a, a high-profile Michigan football player to be the, the lead of it. And I said, don't do that. And the reason I said not to do that is because um, I don't want uh, what I do elsewhere to bleed over into this and force you or whoever that player may or may not turn out to be to feel like they now have to be involved and comment on it. My views are my own. Nobody else needs to own them. I own them myself. And, and I just, I, I, the last place I want to, you know, other than, other than uh, the Thanksgiving dinner table, the second to last place I want to fight the culture war is over college football and Michigan football. And if you follow my, um, my trajectory, since we started Michigan podcast in 2017, you'll see that it's just all uh, the main thing with one exception. I did delve into this stuff during COVID because it was in the way of us playing college football. But other than that, I, I just steer clear of it. Secondly, a school like Michigan is going to have a very diverse community, Mark. Like a lot of public universities, it's going to lean left. But when you have the size of fan base that a Michigan or Ohio State does, even if the righties are a distinct minority, there's still going to be a significant amount of people, right? If Michigan or Penn State in a given year has the largest alumni body in the world, let's say 75% of those people lean left. The, it, that it's it's that's too high, but I'm estimating that high on purpose. The other 25 percent of a community that large is a significant amount of people. That means that you're going to games together, you're going to the M Den, you're purchasing together, you're watching events together, you're donating to the program together. It, it's one of the last. I mean, I I went to my I went to a game, got to sit in a box last November against Nebraska. I I have no idea how the people around me voted, what they thought about various issues. Um, all I know is we actually could put all that aside and be Americans for a few hours and enjoy a, a largely trivial and yet, um, m- you know, meaningful experience uh, in the moment as college football fans. I think those things are important for any form of e pluribus unum. And to that end, you know, to quote Shemi's father, the team, the team, the team. I, I wasn't even aware of this story until Saturday night. One of my little birdies in an arbor texted me, hey, Shemi resigned. And I was like, my wife just had knee surgery. I, I didn't have any idea that this was all going on. I don't I don't go to my Michigan podcast Twitter feed for culture war ish issues, you know, and so I don't have I'm not, I'm not seeing like any of the posts. I've been told that it references stuff written by Thomas Sowell, by my colleague at The Blaze, Jason Whitlock, references me. I guess uh, if someone told me that, that, I, that I, I, I was I said something good about a Democrat, Bobby Kennedy, and somehow that ended up. I, I don't know what's made up and what's not. All right. But here's what I here. I don't need to know all that to know this. When you have a football team with um, with at least 85 guys on scholarship 
and all those coaches and all that support staff, the diversity in opinion is going to be wide. Maintaining some form of brotherhood and equilibrium in the midst of that is not easy, particularly with social media in this day and age. We had a situation with some comments that one of our players, Donovan Edwards, made um, you know, last year. And that was even in the middle of the season that had to get ad addressed and confronted. So these guys have ready, fire, aim, social media at their discretion constantly. Um, and especially if you're playing for the stakes that Michigan is, and Jim's pretty outspoken now. I mean, Jim's the only coach I know of that has actually current active college football coach in division one that I know of that has spoken in person at pro-life fundraisers. I don't know of another one. So Jim's pretty outspoken. Okay. And, um, you know, Jim's on the other side, Jim marched in the BLM marches on campus back in 2020 at the same time, you know? So when you have a football team with as, with as many diverse opinions and backgrounds, um, and you're trying to play for a national championship, the last thing you you don't want to have is something from the outside be an unnecessary distraction. And I go back to what Shemi, one of Shemi's father's uh, famous quotes, the team, the team, the team. And there's just no way, without even looking at what was allegedly said or not, um, the idea that you could even risk something when the majority of players that you recruit are black, that you could even risk something like that on the mere perception. And, in, and you don't have time in someone's living room to educate their parents on the dulcet tones and brilliant writings of Thomas Sowell. If indeed that was even, I'm, I'm hearing all this secondhand because a lot of this got scrubbed. I found out about the story after he was gone and scrubbed his internet. So I've not even seen what this is even about. And I've had people send me stuff. I don't know if it's real or if it's the Twitter stuff. I, I don't know. I was not, I was really not abreast of this story until it reached its culmination Saturday night. That's how I found out about it, you know? Um, uh, so I do know though, you simply cannot risk that um, it, 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 with the, it, to maintain a team, a brotherhood, um, unity, recruiting. You just can't risk any of that. On the other hand, let me say this. And um, I've never met Shemi Schembechler personally, never spoken to him personally. Um, I will, given who his father was, chances are he's been around a lot more black people his entire life than the vast majority of racially conscious whites on the internet who are trying to judge him right now. That doesn't mean that you have to approve of the things he allegedly liked. That doesn't, you could certainly think we just can't have that distraction in our football program, period. Just can't happen. This is not the, this is not the battlefield for it. There are other battlefields in our culture for these things. This is not the one. We're not doing that here. But then the idea that, you know, he is some absolutely uh, racist and terrible person, um, given the fact that uh, his father um, would have done more to provide opportunities for um, economic empowerment and educational opportunity for minorities than 99.999% of white people uh, will in America because of what he did for a living. I, I find that hard to believe at the same time. And I didn't, I, I've been so busy, Mark. I'm not even, I saw you issued an apology. I honestly didn't have time to even read through it. You know, I did see some people say, well, we don't forgive you. Well, then I, that's that. That's to me the real issue with cancel with cancel culture. I, I am totally fine if you want to remove someone from the marketplace whose ideas that you find untoward. My, you know, I don't I don't appreciate Target uh, utilizing uh, satanic imagery at my children. So I'm going to go after them. But if what if Target were to come forward and say, you know what? Um, yeah, that was a total F up. Our bad. Should have never done that. I mean, that's the issue that with the current cancel culture, holding people accountable for their views. I am all for that's the marketplace of ideas. It's what I do for a living, Mark, full time. But is there no place for forgiveness when people do are held? And, and well, of course, he's apologizing now. We got nailed. Most people don't come to repentance until they face the consequences of their own sin. That's that's human nature. No, no one. Most people are not like, you know what? I completely got away with cheating on my wife for the last 10 years. And then just suddenly one day I felt bad about it. So I'm going to stop. No, it's usually getting caught 
that, that introduces you to the consequences for your action that then educates you on what's really at stake here and causes you to say, yeah, yeah, I, I got away with it for so long. I forgot there is a right and a wrong. And I had, I learned that lesson harshly, you know? And so I don't know if that answers your question or not. Um, it's, but given what little I know of it, other than just, you know, the top line news, it's the best answer I have, I'm afraid. I made the same statement about a human nature, but I also made the same statement yesterday that uh, I fortunately have been blessed uh, to be surrounded by remarkable people in my family, significant others and friends who have actually come forward with things that I would have never found out and, and have confessed to and uh, come clean on. But uh, yeah, that's, that's another topic. Uh, yeah, I had a few viewers hit me up just in the last couple of days uh, because they either said goodbye or they uh, chided me for um, stating, uh, bringing politics supposedly into the college football discussion. But I let them know the na national in this uh, particular situation, not the Shemi Schembechler, but the National Labor Relations Board made a statement the other day concerning their suit against a USC, the Pac-12, that they were the ones who brought politics into college football with their statement and their stance. I merely responded to it. So I'm not the one bringing politics, nor do I want to bring it into college football, but I will certainly stand up for what's right when it's presented to me. Uh, the other thing I'll say about this is uh, I didn't make any judgments on what he had to say either, because I, like you, I don't know exactly what was responded to or what was reposted or or liked by him. Um, but I'm not going to be one of those people that's going to run to judgment based on third hand information that um, he, he must be a horrible person. Therefore, I'm going to out him and jump on the bandwagon with everyone else, because I made the statement here yesterday to say, on one hand, yes, there are horrible, hateful, inappropriate things being posted on social media every day by people. However, there are also things being posted on social media there that aren't any of those things in my view, but they are being tagged as such. And I believe it's just as awful by the people that uh, supposedly, you know, place themselves in a high position of authority in the public forum to to cancel out those other people. So that's just as bad in some senses uh, for me. And so, I mean, there's, there's two, there's two standards here, Mark. There, there is what gets in the way of the team's ultimate success. And then there's another standard of what is acceptable political discourse or not. And the reality is a college football team isn't the platform for that second debate ever, ever. No matter what side of the debate we're coming from, that's not the place for it. It's just not. I mean, not, not if you want to be successful, not if you don't want to rip your team apart, you know, not if you want, don't want to do lasting damage to your team. So to me, I don't I, I don't even have to necessarily look at like I had someone send me. I don't know if it's true. I had someone send me a text telling me that they had heard that one of the texts that he had uh, liked or one of the tweets he had liked depicted a, a black member of Congress as like an African tribesman or something, which of course is way out of bounds, no place for that at all. But I didn't see it. I didn't see it in his account. So I don't know. Okay. You know, that would be something I think no matter how you vote or what you think, we would all think there's just no place for that. All right. When we start getting into, you know, the, the, the noted black intellectual Thomas Sowell's contrarian views of, of African American history in the U S that's going to get into a much more subjective environment of whatever your bias is on these issues coming in. Right. On the, on, I think it was Hakeem Jeffries maybe was what I had been told in a text was one of them. If that, if that depiction is accurate. And again, I don't know, cause I didn't see that would be like a red line. I would think for probably anybody, no matter what, for, for the vast majority of people, we can't have that. But here's my point before we even get there, it doesn't matter. You, you, no one, it's his father's own words. No man is more important than the team. And, and that's why when this collective came to me at the dawn of NIL a couple of years ago, I said, don't do it. I'm not important, more important than the team. I don't want to be a distraction. Okay. Don't, don't. So go, go, don't, go do it with somebody else. I'm not, I don't want to be a distraction. You can't be a distraction to the team. You just can't do that. I don't care what it is, whether, you know, we had a situation last year with two of our captains got hurt. And then basically left. And I wasn't upset that they left at all. The worst thing to do is have them hanging around, bitching and moaning to their teammates. If Go. Don't be a distraction. You can't get in the, in the, don't get in the way of the team, period. 
And to me, that's a that's a different standard to what fits your current political paradigms narrative of acceptable discourse or not. Before we even get to that debate, does this get in the way of the team's focus and success? Yes. Then we don't proceed to another step, Mark. It just ends right there and we move on. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. 